Hey everybody, this is Nick Singh, and you are now listening to Autographs. You know, when you stop looking for acceptance and you just enjoy your life, the whole game changes. You have to understand yourself, like, and I think the real answer is real giving. Is that I don't understand why people don't get that if you give purely, you get. We get good at what we do the most of. You nurture the process of like going to yourself and listening to yourself and you get very good at honing your own intuition. Did I actually make people stop and go, whoa, humans are capable of more than I thought. If you're great at a certain skill and you can then put that skill to use to help somebody else, that's fulfillment. 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 My hope is that this show inspires you to just feel like you can just be yourself, have fun and, and, and enjoy your life too. So enjoy and take care out there. I was listening to The Rock on Joe Rogan yesterday, and The Rock said something profound, and I don't think he even realized it. I know the first time I listened to it, I just totally brushed over it, and 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 it didn't hit me. But he was talking about becoming a pro wrestler, and his story, if you don't know it, was that he was playing in the CFL. His contract ended. I think it was due to injury or something. And then his coach called him on the phone, and it was one of those phones attached to the wall. His family wasn't making a lot of money. His dad was in the other room. His dad, for context, if you don't know, Rocky Johnson, I think that's his name, was a professional wrestler. And so they knew what it was like to struggle. They knew what it was like to know that wrestling wasn't necessarily something that was going to bring in a lot of dollars. And The Rock knew that, you know, his only real thing that he knew how to do in life was to play football, yet he didn't have a contract that year. Anyway, the coach calls him. It's on one of those, you know, landlines that are attached to a wall, so you can't really hide. His dad's in the other room. He could hear him talking. And the coach said, look, buddy, I know that we didn't sign you for this year, but I want you to keep your hopes up. I'd like to sign you next year. I just need you to work on X, Y, Z. And The Rock remembered saying to himself, shit. In his heart, he had wanted to try wrestling for a while, but he hadn't ever made time to or given himself permission to or just agreed with himself that he was going to actually give it a shot. He saw his dad doing it, didn't know much about it. And mind you, this is a really long time ago when wrestling really didn't seemingly make people a lot of money. His dad was having trouble according to The Rock, even meeting, you know, payments for 500 bucks a month in some circumstances. And The Rock leans into the call and he asks himself quietly while the coach is on the phone whether or not he wanted to do wrestling. And his response is what I found profound. His response to himself was, yeah, you know what? I think I think I would like it. I, I think that would be something cool that I would like. And that was enough criteria for him to then tell the coach, hey, listen, um, I genuinely appreciate the offer, but I'm going to have to close a chapter on this on, on, on this portion of my life on football, the coach said, I respect that. Take it easy and good luck. And then he went to the other room, told his dad he's going to be a wrestler. And he got a lot of flack from his dad because his dad really didn't necessarily believe it was a good way to make money. Same as his dad's friends who were also wrestlers. But the thing I really took from that moment was that the rock said to himself quietly, I think, I think I would like this. I think that this would be cool enough for me to do. I, I, I think I, I think I'll like it. And that was enough criteria for him to work off and go do what he did, which was become The Rock, which is where he got that name and become one of the most iconic wrestlers of all time. Yeah, I don't know much about wrestling, but I, I, I was thinking that that is a really interesting thing that I know in my life I've over-indexed a lot on doing things in some circumstances before I feel fully bought in, before I feel fully invested in the thing and I want to really do it. I want my desire to percolate up and it for it to be just quite clear that this is a thing that I meant to do. But life isn't always rigged that way. You know, in some circumstances, you're going to have inklings, curiosities, excitement, inspirations, interests that if you just have the courage to just follow blindly and just say, fuck it, I'll do it and just see what happens. And don't, you're not really committing to anything. You're just committing to try the damn thing and take the next step, which it takes bravery because there's a lot of uncertainty on that path. I think what you'll find is that you'll be met with this opening of more excitement, more enjoyment. And it might all might, it might not always flesh out to what you thought it was. And so, you know, let's say you step into an arena and you start doing something because you were interested in it. You might, you know, while you're there, realize, okay, wow, I'm really interested in this part of it. Or, you know what, this ain't it, but now I know it's this. And just life opens up to you that way. And so my message to you today is that, um, you know, have the courage to listen to those inklings and know that you actually don't need as much criteria as you think to really find your thing and do your thing. And there's this interesting paradoxical relationship of finding your thing in life which is, um, you know, you find your thing, but your thing also finds you. And you got to be on the path to do that. I'm, 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 I'm learning that in live time. You have to be on the path to do it. You can't just wake up one day and have this, you know, rushing sense of excitement. Life is not always like that for everybody. And, you know, sometimes your excitement starts out as an interest, start out as interest. And the best analogy, while it's old, I can give you 
is it's like a fire where there's a flame and you know it's not always this raging inferno and you might see other people with raging inferno say god i want that well in most circumstances it didn't start as a raging inferno and it didn't end as a raging inferno you know over the course of time that thing probably started with a really small flame and they just fanned it and nurtured it and it became more and it became this raging inferno but keep in mind it rains there's wind there's things that knock it down you're not always going to feel that way and anyways i'm getting beyond myself now what i'm trying to say is that don't necessarily make the criteria before you do something so damn high that you just don't do the thing. Instead, just step in and see what happens. So that's my lesson from the episode. I'll link it below. It's a good one with The Rock and Mr. Joe Rogan. Peace.